Hello, I'm Leroy Garcia, and this is Blue Rain Gallery Podcast. Today, we're doing something special. We're cruising with our friend Breeze Marcus, and uh, he's going to show us a little bit about what he really does here in the Phoenix uh, community. Uh, we're going to go visit, start on the res and look at some of his uh, earlier works. And then we'll come back to Phoenix and visit some really nice uh, murals that he's been working on. I mean, although it's not the majority of the community farming itself, it's still, I guess, that newer version of what it probably would have looked like. Many, yeah. many years ago same thing villages and homes and the area being farmed uh, and this would have been throughout the entire valley even where we just came from from my from my studio in downtown Phoenix there were ancient sites there that uh, that uh, villages and people that lived there who were farming those lands right there too yeah uh, just anywhere again anywhere along the river and and one of the more interesting facts that I that I appreciate about our ancestors is that uh, these giant canal systems that they hand dug, hand dug, you know, that's like a very... So yeah, they didn't have point. tractors. <laughs> no, they didn't. They were using literally sticks to dig 10 feet, 10, 10 foot deep canals by 30 foot wide canals. Mm -hmm. And one of the longest canal systems from a thousand years ago is about 15 miles long. Sheesh. Uh, hand so dug. Hand dug. I don't know if anybody's ever dug a ditch. I have. <laughs> yeah. And it's hard that's work. Hard work. <laughs> that's bad. It's one of the reasons I went into the art business. I told my grandpa, I'm not going to work this hard. And you know what? I, I work just as hard. But uh, digging a ditch is hard. Well, it's funny you say that because before I became a full-time artist, I, I was doing pretty much general construction, too. Mm -hmm. Physical labor. Physical labor. Uh, operating heavy equipment digging ditches and yeah it's hard work and, uh, <laughs> but you're right artwork artwork is also hard work mm -hmm. it's a dedication and a focus although your back is a lot better <laughs> yeah is that, yeah. that's back breaking work that's why they say back breaking work <laughs> so how old is this uh, uh, piece uh, this piece is probably oh man I want to say six or seven years old I want to say 2016 or 17 and that's actually a collaborative piece with another community mural artist a very good friend of mine uh, Dwayne Manuel and um, hey it's held up pretty good man it's not yeah it's not bad it's 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 the color choices I think what what people don't understand in in murals even the people painting the murals if you're new to it is that certain colors are going to hold up longer um like if this were to be, say, a warm colored palette, yeah, um, reds, pinks, uh, it would have might not last in the sun. It would have gotten eaten up uh, in the first couple of years. And as a matter of fact, there was some some pink highlights, some sort of magenta highlights that have com been there. completely washed out that you can't even tell anymore. So how does a project like this start? Is this, is this the family that said, "Hey, will you paint my fence?" Or like, tell us the process on that. So this this kind of came about. Mm, with a with my friend Dwayne who I was just mentioning we we understand that in the work that we're making it's not it's not traditional obviously um, and we also understand as well as a lot of the community that that we're, we're contemporary people so why can't we have contemporary style artwork that reflects who we are today mm -hmm. um, and bridge the gaps of course you know with the influences so well the influence is definitely uh, you know your people is the weave right absolutely so there's a historic reference to the contemporary yeah version. so but for this this was a this was a labor of love this was more for us to beautify the community to leave something that they could relate to in both the uh, a cultural and historical context, but also in the way of understanding that this is this is newer, and it's something that uh, I think for us, for me anyway, to speak for me, me myself personally, to carry on the that continuum, that legacy of, of this community and, and, 
in moving forward into the future, whatever that looks like. Yeah. Your reservation is way different than most, uh, as far as the farming. Uh, um, it's just amazing that the tribe has done, even though it's leased out. Um, in Taos, when when I had a great grandfather who made uh, arrangements with the Taos Pueblo tribe and would rent lands from him and for the same reasons. Mm. And there's like 600 acres he would take care of. Wow. Definitely feel tied to the land when he drives through here. <laughs> you know, the, the natives in, in general, you know, our indigenous populations were always good at respecting and reverencing and taking care of water, building, like you said, <laughs> You know, digging the ditches and reservoirs and all kinds of stuff. You think about Chaco Canyon, it's nothing over there, but they, they created a way to live they by protecting the water. They figured something out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's a lot that people miss in the history of Native people here. Um, so the agriculture, for sure, I think a lot of people don't understand that there would be no Phoenix if it weren't for those Native very, populations. Very intelligent, highly intelligent native populations from many, many, many centuries ago who figured it out. Yeah, how to live in the heat. How to live in the heat and how to utilize the water. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's the only way to really survive. Um, but beyond beyond that achievement, the, the ability to communicate and trade with other cultures way outside of this region. For sure. And that's a big piece of a history that I think in Phoenix anyway that we tend to forget um, and and just the way trade works influencing other cultures and vice versa taking things leaving things just the way it, it, it was very interesting you know in some of the burial sites in Chaco and throughout uh, northern southern Colorado through those sites they find uh, parrot feathers and stuff you know birds from Central America oh yeah but and you're like, well, what did they trade for? But they're trading for all kinds of goods. Like you guys think about the crops you guys are making, mm-hmm. or even the goods too. Like basketry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the bigger trade items coming out of this region was um, was a very sp- specific style of pottery. Probably. Oh yeah, Maricopa. Well, the yeah. red and black. Well. Not the red and black. That's that's more recent. That's in the last couple centuries. But uh, the 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 Hohokam era, Hohokam. Oh, yeah. which is which is ancestrally uh, oh, very tied to the Hopis too. Uh, the autumn and uh, oh, there's a good old rest dog. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, we're gonna come up on another one here pretty quick. Okay, let's see. If... So this is a good example of some more of uh, Breeze's uh, weave design. And this is another collaboration, too, with the artist, uh, Dwayne Manuel, that I was talking about. Yeah. Uh, who's from here. Does it wrap? It, it doesn't. Oh, yeah. It doesn't. It doesn't. That's, this is other work. Hey, this is where I grew up at. Yep. Salt, Salt River. So we're going with Breeze to see a couple of his major uh, murals. Um, this one we're going to be looking at is with uh, one he did with El Mac, and uh, maybe Breeze can tell us again who El Mac is and the, the correlation between the two. Of them. Give us some more history there, brother. Yeah, so the artist known as is El Mac. Uh, his real name is uh, Miles McGregor. He's a good friend of mine. I've known him for over two decades. He's originally from the city of Phoenix. Uh, now lives in Los Angeles, but uh, he's. I believe uh, worldwide recognized for his massive murals, specifically portrait murals, and he's painted in so many different countries I can't even keep track, but he's a near and dear friend. Um, We're both part of the same crew. We've kind of grown up together, and uh, this, this mural that we created downtown back in 2021 was a response to uh, a call that went out but it was also in receiving that the the commission for it we uh, wanted to create something that was relevant to 
the native people here, specifically my tribes. And Mac wanted to paint a portrait of, of somebody from my community. And that's how this project came about. Nice. Get it that way. So the two of you have been working off and on a little bit here and there. Uh, Breeze was telling me about how Mac's career uh, skyrocketed pretty fast. And he is internationally known. Uh, currently resides in Los Angeles. That's right. And uh, probably has murals all over the place going over there as well. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. Uh, Breeze has had a wonderful journey of collaborating with a lot of great street artists. And uh, it's important that we recognize that. Uh, especially with Breeze because he's giving reverence to his community in, in this valley, which we forget about because so urbanized with all this development and technology centers and, and whatnot, but it, it all comes back down to, you know, the na native communities. They're the ones that were here that developed a process for people to actually live here in the first place. Mm -hmm. And so that, that's pretty cool. Breeze. Yeah. I'll so this, to... uh, this project, how, give us the dimensions, like, uh, on this mural we're about to look at, what, what are the dimensions? Do you remember? Uh, the dimensions of this piece are uh, roughly 50 feet high by... It wraps the corner, so it's hard to completely Figure tell. Out. I think it was close to 100 feet wide, maybe more like 85 or something. So roughly 50 by maybe 100, give or take. Yeah. Um, I mean, we started it in... <laughs> I think it was March 1st of 2021, and we worked pretty much every day the month of March, and we completed it, I think, right at the very end of March, um, day and night, uh, different shifts, working on boom lifts, working through different weather during that time. So the the first murals that we saw with Breeze on the, on the res, um, those are all freehand. They're not pre-drawn or mapped out. Uh, was this was this with El Mac mapped out before he went into there and did this project? In this in this particular collaboration, we we had to have a more of a game plan, and we needed to have a, in that process of submitting something in such a prominent location within the downtown vicinity. We we, we needed to have a, a visual a, a concept ready to go to be submitted and to be approved which is the, is the case for a good portion of commissioned public murals. Um, so was your drawings uh, a rough out or were they detailed? We, uh, they were, it was a pretty detailed, it was a pretty detailed concept drawing. And I would say it's pretty accurate to what we came up with uh, as far as the, uh, the mock-up. And once that got approved, we were able to get started. Although, in these types of projects and big, large scale public and mural projects, uh, it doesn't always happen right away. It's a lot of times it's the hurry up and wait. It's, it's it just takes a lot of a lot of uh, different hands to go through, different eyes to look at, different approvals. Especially if you're dealing with a city or, or just large large um, budgets and things like that, and uh, permits, etc. So I mean, it took us probably two years to get the green light before we could actually paint this thing. Wow. Um, yeah. I think that's a, uh, uh, an understanding that people looking at and appreciating murals with what we have right now uh, throughout the country, right? And I think around the world, this sort of new renaissance of street art style, new muralism going up is sometimes it's not as quick as you think, um, even though they seem to pop up overnight. Sometimes these things are well planned out in advance, uh, just like any public art project. So the public art project that this mural's on uh, is financed by governmental monies. This was mm, this was a privately funded one, but it had support from different entities within the city for so, sure. So that's what you had to submit to. Working with the government entities is really hard, uh, but it could be fulfilling in the end if you get the project. It can be. I mean, that's that's my that's my life right now with murals. Um, I'm, doing a handful of public art projects with if it's not the city it's private developers and those those are long hauls in the process um, yeah it just it's it, if if it's something that uh, somebody is thinking about 
if you want to go where the if people want to go where the uh, the really good money is at, then you need to learn how to navigate that and really be patient, but also be on your toes when dealing with those types of contracts. You know, uh, from the time I met you to the time now, I've seen you um, develop a lot of talents, especially uh, in the in the cyber world, um, oh, namely yeah. your iPad, right? <laughs> yeah, and sure. you're, you're also doing production video and things with your design. Oh, sure, yeah. Right? So you've got to teach yourself a lot of stuff. Uh, I mean, I think it's a good thing to, to learn, you know, utilize the different uh, platforms that are available, but also understanding the ins and outs of how certain things work, uh, different mediums, different platforms, uh, visual media, uh, specifically, I guess, putting together projects, projects, short, whether they're animated or digital graphics or short I don't even know what to call them. I guess short films, little 30 second, 60 second videos. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's great to, 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 to learn and understand because that's sort of the world we live in right now. And it's a, it's another way to communicate, I think faster with your audiences. Um, so yeah, it was absolutely necessary to learn those things in order to just to add it to the, to the, to the, to the arsenal, to the toolbox. Yeah. Um, and for, our, for our audience, uh, for reference, you, you can find, um, videos or podcasts that we've done with Breeze for examples or you can also go to his uh, Instagram page which is what uh, Breeze one PHX so B-R-E-E-Z-E -E -E, the number one and then the PHX as in Phoenix yeah you can see the, the amount of creativity that, that Breeze done and uh, Breeze is a self-taught person he's not uh, he doesn't come through a scholastic or academia this is somebody that has really reverenced his traditions and has spent time in practice, practice, practice to develop uh, what he's doing there. And he, that'll give you a stronger appreciation when you look at his Instagram or if you go to blueraingallery.com and look at his stuff on our sites. Um, the, other, the other area that he's really expanded on is the Blue Rain print shop because his, his imagery, it goes with everything and anything. Uh, one of the highlights I think of Breeze's career was uh, two years ago. Uh, Phoenix Suns invited. Was it two years ago? Uh, almost two years. Yeah, almost, almost two years ago. Phoenix Suns basketball team NBA approached him for the Native American night. And uh, tell us a little bit about that project. Well, so I've actually done three or four projects with the Phoenix Suns, and I would say that started maybe more like four or five years ago. That relationship with them. But um, that's mainly due to being very, uh, just being very involved in downtown and being very, ha having a big presence and you know, I think the public murals and, and everything else, online presence really helped. But anyhow, the fast forward to the, the specific uh, night from a couple years ago, the Phoenix Suns had reached out to me to do a, a limited design for the Native American Heritage Night, which was uh, November of that year. And so I put out the design and it was great. They, they did a short a short uh, video on me. They had it during the actual game, showed it on the big screen. Um, you know, the shirts were, were actually printed and given away as a gift to the first 5,000 people that came through the arena that night. Um, so they weren't necessarily for retail, so they're a bit of a collector's item. Um, but it was a great experience, and the the design was a a autumn basket design with the sun's font at the bottom. And it, what it was really about was paying tribute and respect to these communities that were from here, and understanding that even where the arena sits now, that that that's on ancestral land because there was a village there back in the day um so that was good on the phoenix suns for them to to recognize that and and to want to collaborate on that sort of project um and again it really came down to mainly i think uh continuing that relationship with them because we had done a couple other really fun projects in the past and and possibly some more in the future um but uh it was great and i'm, I'm very appreciative of it yeah, well, that's a big honor, and um, I, I think those murals are helping elevate your career, is my point. And 
uh, you're getting recognition in, in a lot of different ways that yeah. maybe you had thought about when you started this journey of painting in general, right? <laughs> Did you ever ex- expect to go to these directions and to these elevations? I don't know if you really know where. There's always the unknown. You don't know what lies ahead in the path. So things that do pop up, uh, sometimes they're a big surprise. And and, and uh, there's a lot of good lessons to learn from them, I think. And once again, though, I'm really appreciative of, of everything and, and all the different ways that uh, uh, a career can branch out and really it's 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 all about pushing forward i think and it's really about uh, being consistent um although it, it is great too to it's great to branch out and to utilize these different mediums and platforms but i think it's also great to remember work the roots too and as far as like traditional painting traditional studio fine art work and, and murals too um to not lose sight of that because i feel like in the end that's going to be um, the bigger thing to focus on, which is kind of where I'm at right now, and, and trying to come full circle and really balancing out this this path and this life with all these different things happening, um, and making sure my work work ethic in the studio is on point, and making making work for for the gallery and for for that type of, that that world that part of the uh, the journey, mm-hmm. and um, and again I think uh, for me that's the for me, the studio work, the fine art, that's the that's the long term. That's the long haul. That's the, the long distance uh, marathon. And it's something to, 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 to maintain and to keep, keep up on. Whereas, like, I don't see myself painting murals forever. Like, I... I it's hard work. It's, it's, it's a lot of work. And I don't necessarily want to be 80 years old on a 50-foot scaffolding. <laughs> <laughs> or in a boom. Or in a boom. In lift. the wind. Yeah, in the wind. <laughs> um, I'd rather be sitting in the studio making artwork. Yeah, yeah. Well, you're you're definitely on that journey, and uh, you're gonna get there. Um, sometimes it's just a matter of patience. But what I do love is your appreciation for your your own culture and where you came from, and the appreciation of land itself and water. And um, we we're just talking about the Gila. Is that the Gila River? The, the Salt River. or the Salt River? Sorry, as, as well as the Gila. Yeah, Salt. but the Salt River right now is usually dry, but we've had so much moisture here in the mountains and in the valley it's it's really full and i was asking bees where, where's that all that water go to so the gulf <laughs> yeah right over mexico it's that much water it's an unbelievable yeah and uh, we, were, we were talking a little bit about the native communities and the their environmental uh, tendencies especially for uh, water they, they preserve it. Uh, it it is the bloodline of a bloodline of life itself here in in the southwest corridor because we are in either low low desert or high mountain desert territories pretty cool yeah so we're standing in front of uh one of the larger murals that uh breeze has in the city this is downtown phoenix not too far from central this is probably first street or so um first first avenue um in Half of this mural, as we discussed before as we were driving here, uh, was co-produced with El Mac. And if you stand back, which we'll show you, you'll see El Mac's part and you'll see Breeze's part. But it's uh, really nicely blended and well thought out. Um, Tell us about using booms and stuff to get up that height. Yeah, so as we can see, really the the height is about maybe just under 50 feet. But... uh, this was the the alley that we had to have two giant uh, scissor, uh, boom lifts and uh, working side by side. And when you're downtown, and I think any city, the the wind tunnels that that, that get created, the it's, it's it's a bit of a challenge when you're that high up. So so anybody that works construction, uh, I applaud because <laughs> <laughs> it's dangerous work. But anyhow, that's in a nutshell what we had to go through in creating this piece. Um, but really, it's more of a uh, uh, the collaborative efforts that we could come together, which is not always easy because I think when you're collaborating on anything, specifically a large scale mural, it has to be, there has to be the right relationship with the person that you're working with and you have to have the similar end goal, result, vision, etc. Uh, because if it doesn't and this happens, it'll fall apart or it just won't come together, period. And I think the great thing about working with my friend El Mac is that we've known each other for so long, we understand exactly how each other's work and it came together really well and we're very honored to have this this beautiful piece in the middle of uh, downtown Phoenix so 
It's very beautiful. Hey, uh, Breeze, I'd like to thank you for um, hanging out with us today, showing us some stuff, Absolutely. talking about your life and uh, your influences. We're, we're proud of you. Uh, we love you mucho. I'd like to encourage people to go to Blue Rain Gallery, uh, subscribe under our podcast, um, to any of the platforms that you want, including YouTube. Uh, also, I want to encourage everybody to visit uh, Blue Rain Print Shop and check out Breeze's beautiful product line that he has. It's uh, some of our most popular lines that we have on Blue Rain Print Shop. Bring art into your everyday life. Thanks, Breeze. Thank you. <laughs>